Hello everybody, it's Mike with Spray Jones and we are going into video number two on why the codes are rigged. The title is rigged. How the code is rigged against spray foam. And I would say that we're going to get into some interesting information today. I'm going to sort of jump right to the sauce because I've, I've gone over this in other videos and I don't think it's gotten quite the attention that it deserves. You know, most people that just gloss over this and they go, oh yeah, whatever. This is a earth shattering piece of information. And this is why I say the codes are rigged because the very data that is being presented here doesn't factor into changing a lot of the way that things are, are done. And we're gonna talk about air barrier and air leakage today, uh, which is 98% of your water problems in a wall. If you're new to this channel and just tuning in for the first time, my name is Mike, I'm the owner of Spray Jones and I produce content on spray foam insulation and I tie all the information together a lot in the industry on building specifications and how we can use foam to solve problems, how codes are set up, how two pound closed cell foam and open cell foam is sprayed into projects. So it's geared towards everybody, some of the installers, uh, some the a lot of the end users and recipients. Today we're talking about air barriers and I want you to check out this report. This is 2009 assessment of energy rating of polyurethane foam walls. Now this is a NRC National Research Council uh, report that was done. So a third party government funded third party. Now I know there's a bit of eye roll government funded can mean skewed, but this is supposed to be a non-biased test. And what they did was they, they built two by six walls and then they built, uh, insulated them with, with fibrous insulation back when we were still using 141B blowing agent. And then they did some closed cell foam. So they did fibrous walls and they did uh, spray foam walls. The setup of the wall was OSB. They used a weather resistive barrier. So think about like Tyvek or some type of house wrap. They had an air barrier poly in a fiberglass wall, uh, zero cladding on the outside and all their penetrations were done in accordance with the CCMC guideline. In short, uh, they didn't miss any uh, studs and the screws through the sheetrock were eight inches apart. This just gives you a cross-sectional view of uh, OSB, right, and insulation and vapor barrier where things are located. This is the spray foam. This would be the cold side. This is the warm side. Here's your drip rock inside. So we've got two by six walls and we've got two by six walls, both, and that one's foam insulated and one's bat insulated. But what we're really here to test is the air leakage ability. So when we go to these walls, here's the air leakage data. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to zoom in here and scroll so that you can see this really closely. They're testing the two by six batted walls with penetrations and no penetration. So penetration is right here, no penetration, and then with penetrations are right here. Now, when you set up an air leakage test, it's done at a standardized uh, air leakage. So that air leakage amount is 75 kilopascals. So they're gonna, they're gonna depressurize the wall or pressurize it, whichever way you wanna look at it, inside, outside, air pressure. They're gonna do this at 75 pascals. So this is where things have to pass. And this is the maximum allowable limit of air leakage, 0 0.05 liters per square meter. That's the maximum amount that the wall can leak. So right away, we see that there's a huge problem here. If 0 0.05 is all we can leak, then where does the penetration wall start at? It starts leaking at somewhere from between, let's say midway, 0.45. So 0.45 compared to 0 0.05, that's 400 and say 50%. So this is an air leakage value of 450% more than the air leakage rating. You're saying, what are you talking about? As soon as the sheetrock is put on, 
There's no electrical plugs and there's no through wall penetration. So no outside electrical, no plumbing pipe, no, no penetration through the wall assembly. Just batted, house wrap, poly on the inside done to the CCMC Garrod lines fails by a factor of 450%. Now, folks, this is universal. Whether you do this to the best standard in North Dakota or Iowa or South Dakota, it doesn't matter. The air leakage is going to be the same. Just because this is a Canadian standard and a Canadian test doesn't mean that our air leakage up here in Canada is worse than what it would be down in the U.S. So you can take and extrapolate these results and say, listen, if they can get that much air leakage on their tests in Canada, then we're going to be seeing the same where we are. And then this is the 2 by 6 wall batted with penetration. So outside plug, any interior electrical outlet, right? Anything going through the wall. And it's factoring in at 0.6, you know, 2. So 620%. So the very standards that they are mandating us to, the walls won't even pass it once the sheetrock is installed. So massive amount of air leakage uh, from inside to outside. Now, where do the spray foam walls rate? Right down here. They rate right down here. Here's where your spray foam walls are. And a lot of people don't, factor this into their thinking. They they think one dimensionally. The spray foam should be between the studs. If you're using two pound closed cell foam, you've got to caulk the seams and stop uh, the air leaking through the studs. And then you want to have your walls sealed up your foam into the cracks, into the crevices, into the corners. So you can see that the spray foam system is the only system with current building techniques that passes the very code. Do you think this factors into changing the code? No. Trying to get an internal air barrier system in cold weather climate is nearly impossible. They would have to drastically change how the buildings are built and the methods that they're going to use to seal them. And this is sealing it from the inside at the drywall level to the outside. We're not even factoring in the amount of air leakage that you can get into the wall from the outside. How's that sealed? What's sealing that? To what standard is that continuous and airtight to the exterior? So you've kind of got two, two envelopes that are competing. One is the outside. There's the drainage plane, but there's also the external air barrier, the external air seal to the ex outside. And then your internal in cold weather climates is vital because you need to stop the warm moisture laden air getting through the sheetrock, getting through the wall assembly and causing condensation uh, issues in the wall, in the fibrous wall. It can't be done. Not well. You're going to have to take extra steps and use extra materials. Here's the actual numbers that came in uh, that we talked about on that chart. Uh, this is the chart we're referring to here. Here's the raw data that went into it. Uh, glass fiber wall one and glass fiber uh, wall five. So this is non-penetration wall. So zero plugs, zero outlets, zero through wall penetrations, 0.369. And remember the maximum leakage is 0 0.05 and a 0.62 two on penetrated wall. So these numbers are indefensible. And the reason being is that this is done to current standards. So the standard is wrong. It's not working. You put up six mil polyethylene, you caulk, you tape, you, you put liquid applied where need be into the corners. As soon as you put up the sheetrock, factor of 400% or factor of 600%. Again, here's, here's the chart, 75 Pascals, as soon as the wind pressure is up, it's even higher, right? Non penetrated wall, penetrated wall. In order to get a code compliant wall with bat, poly, I don't think you can do it with just straight poly. I think you drastically have to change the fundamental way of how you're going to achieve an internal air barrier system. You need to go to some type of liquid applied or self healing membrane inside at the drywall level in order to compensate for the screws and the holes and everything. Either way, 
you're talking about massive amounts of percentage of increase of cost. So right now, you can see the closed cell spray foam walls are blowing the doors off of the conventionally batted walls. And this is death by a thousand cuts, folks. This is air leakage carrying 98% of your water into the wall assembly. This is where we get this whole idea of, well, then we got to let it dry out. Well, okay, well, if the water is getting in, can you really effectively dry it to the outside from the inside? That's an, a discussion for a whole nother video. So I want to wrap this up and keep it simple, but this is a bombshell report. This, by, the own, by their own study, their own NRC independent third-party study, is showing that the very standards that mandate the code, the wall assembly is failing it. The standard batted wall assembly is failing it with the sheetrock in place. And the numbers don't lie. And the spray foam's blowing it out the door. So the code is rigged because the code keeps letting this go. This should be an instant fail. This should have had to have changed it. That would be a multi-billion dollar industry that you're now going to affect. And there's people that aren't going to let that happen, not easily. Whereas the spray foam, we're still being forced to comply. We're the only ones with our product installed between the two by six and then caulking the seams actually complies to the very standard that they think they're adhering to, and it's not. So I give a big eye roll to anybody that claims that Bat and Pauly um, is a code compliant system that's gonna perform well. I just, the data's not there. It's just not there. When you, when you start to test it in strenuous conditions, it's not there. And that's the best that it can perform. I mean, you can take extra steps but those extra steps are rarely taken. And what I'm saying here in this data is if the code was being fair to spray foam and to fibers, more would need to be done to fibers in order to get it to comply. And the spray foam would actually be viewed as a code compliant air barrier assembly right from the get-go. And I guess you could say that the spray foam is, but this is really showing you how lacking the fibers, mineral fiber, you know, or glass fiber, doesn't really matter a six mil polyethylene on the inside. And to those of you in the cold or warm weather climates that aren't required to put uh, air barriers up on the inside, so you have no poly, you, know, you have no AVB, what do you think's going on when the air conditioner is running? What do you think's happening with the amount of air that can get past the sheetrock? See, this is another reason why I really don't like, I'm gonna have to address flash and bat in a whole independent series. The amount of air that can course through the fibrous is undermining it. So you've got to hold the air still. There can't be convective currents going through the fibrous insulation. Otherwise, it isn't insulating. You've got a convective loop, and it skews it. So if you do not have some way of making it airtight from the dry wall, you are defeating the entire purpose of what the insulation is trying to achieve. I hope this makes sense. I hope you can see what's being said here. Earth-shattering. I, I can only think that this makes people on the other side quake and therefore it just needs to be suppressed and not put into the law. If, if you really took this for what it is and changed the rules because of it to, to be in compliance with this, if we were really truly serious about hitting these numbers, we'd say, all right, Mr. Fibers, here's now what you're going to need to do in order to be compliant and watch their increase of their cost go up 80, 90, 100 percent to now be finally code compliant, finally. So tell me what you think. I would really like to open the can of worms on this one. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you see, good, bad, or otherwise. And I'll catch you on part three of uh, their problems aren't our problems. We're gonna get into that video. See you soon.